Hi guys, welcome to the fundamentals of IELTS writing test 2, a 10 part series covering what you need to know in the academic IELTS writing task 2. In this series, we're going to break down three simple stages of how to write an effective essay for writing task 2. And these simple stages are the planning stage, the writing stage, and the checking stage. In the previous video, we covered the planning stage. In this stage, we have to understand the question, generate ideas, and structure the essay. Now in this video, we're going to discuss the writing stage, focusing on writing and introduction. But before we go on to that, let me share to you some common problems that students face when they write an introduction. The first one is that students talk too generally about the topic. Remember that you have to answer the question and not write generally about the topic. As I mentioned in a previous video, you have to identify the general and the specific topic. The second one is not including a thesis statement. A thesis statement is a sentence that expresses your position or your opinion on the given topic. And this is considered as the most important sentence in your essay, so make sure that you include it. The third one is trying to be entertaining. What students think is that they'll get a high score if they have the most entertaining, the most fascinating ideas. And the tendency is that when they uh, use interesting or entertaining ideas, they use flowery language, which is probably not appropriate for the essay. So to avoid using inappropriate vocabulary, we must uh, stick to the simple, obvious, and straightforward ideas. And in that way, you'll save time thinking of what to write in your essay. The last one is, using an informal style. Remember that in all academic writing, we have to make use of the formal style of writing. Now let's look at some good and bad examples of an introduction. We have a question here. There is a good deal of evidence that increasing car use is contributing the global warming and having other undesirable effects and people's health and well-being. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? Now I'm going to show you two different examples of an introduction for this question and uh, I want you to identify which one is the good one and which one is the bad one. Feel free to pause this video if you need some time to think. All right, so which one do you think is the good one and which one's the bad one? Obviously, the first one is the good introduction, while the second one is the bad introduction. But what makes the second one the bad one? This introduction just talks about the topic very generally. As you see, in the first sentence, it just talks about cars as a means of getting around. It's a general thing. The third sentence just talks about global warming as one of the most serious issues in modern life. Again, it's a general thing. So this introduction talks about the topic very generally. The second problem is that this introduction copies words and phrases from the question. So what words and phrases are copied? You can see that in the introduction, we have increasing car use, global warming, and people's health and well-being. These are the key phrases in this question or in this topic. Now, how about in the introduction? Do we see them? Well, yeah. The first sentence, you see cars. In the third sentence, you see global warming. And in the last sentence, you see 
people's health and well-being. It's obvious that the writer has not attempted to change the key phrases or keywords from the question. Another thing is that this introduction doesn't include a thesis statement. As I said earlier, a thesis statement is the most important uh, sentence in your essay, especially if the question requires to give an opinion. And this introduction does not show that, does not give that. So these are the three reasons why this introduction is considered the bad one. Now, how about the good introduction? As you see, there are only two sentences in this paragraph. The first sentence is a paraphrase of the question. And the second sentence is the thesis statement. So how do we paraphrase a question? First of all, paraphrasing means stating the question or the topic again, but with different words so that it has the same meaning. I repeat, the same meaning, even though you're using different words. So how do we paraphrase a topic or a question? Well, we can do that by using synonyms. Synonyms are words with the same meaning. Another way is by changing the order of the sentences. Let's go back to the question and the introduction earlier, the good introduction. Okay, so you see that in the question, the first part of the sentence goes like this. There is a good deal of evidence that increasing car use. So the first part of the sentence focuses on the increase in car usage. In the paraphrase, that idea is in the second part of the sentence. You see, this is caused by the expanding use of automobiles. All right. So it's very clear that the writer has changed the order of the sentences. Now, how about the synonyms? What are the synonyms used in this paraphrase? First, we have the word increasing, which is changed to expanding. The word or the phrase car use, which is changed to use of automobiles. Global warming, which is changed to rising global temperatures. And people's health and well-being changed to human health and fitness. There you go. So a paraphrase of the question by using synonyms and changing the order of the sentences. In this way, you're not only showing to the examiner that you know how to paraphrase, but you're also exhibiting a wide range of vocabulary, which can boost your lexical resource score. How about the second part of the introduction, which is the thesis statement? In the introduction that we looked at earlier, the thesis statement is, this essay agrees that increasing use of motor vehicles is contributing to rising global temperatures and certain health issues. Very easy to understand the sentence. This thesis statement tells the examiner that you have understood the question, and this is one sentence long, plus it addresses the micro keywords and not the topic in general. All right, so the question, once again, is to what extent do you agree or disagree to the given statement or the given situation? And the thesis statement clearly says that this essay agrees. 
All right. Well, we actually can say uh, personally, I, in my point of view, I agree that so on and so forth. But if we want to make our essay more formal, we can make use of the expression, this essay agrees or this essay disagrees that so on and so forth. However, we have to know that a thesis statement only applies to questions that ask you for your opinion. Now I'm going to show you four different questions and please identify which of the following questions need a thesis statement. Again, a thesis statement is only applicable for questions that ask for an opinion. Great. So questions two and three are questions that ask you for your opinion, which means that you need a thesis statement for these questions. So if the, if the examiner or if the task asks you these questions, what is your opinion? Do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? Discuss both views and give your opinion. And do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Remember that you need to write a thesis statement in your introduction. But how about for the other questions, such as the question, what are the advantages and disadvantages? What are some of the problems associated with this? And what are some of the possible solutions? Plus two part questions. If we don't need to give an opinion here, so what should we write in the introduction? Well, you still have to write the paraphrase of the given topic plus an outline statement. So yeah, you heard it right. We don't need to write a thesis statement here, but we need to write an outline statement. But what is an outline statement? An outline statement tells what you will discuss in the main body paragraphs. All right, so it's just a, a brief answer to the given question. All right, let's look at some topics with different questions. The topic is, in some countries, young people are encouraged to work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university studies. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this situation? So basically, we just have to discuss the positive and negative aspects of uh, taking a gap year, all right? So taking a year off from studies. And the introduction, the sample introduction to this topic is before embarking on college, this one is a paraphrase of starting university studies. Many young people are advised, a paraphrase of encouraged, that a year working or traveling, a paraphrase of to work or travel for a year, may be a good option. So you see that this paraphrase does not only use synonyms, but has also changed the order of the sentence. And the outline statement is, this essay will suggest that saving money is the biggest advantage of this, and a reduced motivation to study is a primary disadvantage. So basically, the outline statement just answers, in general, the question, what are the advantages and disadvantages? You don't need to give the details yet. You don't need to support your ideas yet because this is just the introduction. But you have to outline what you're going to write in the body paragraph so that the examiner will easily understand and will, can easily will expect that uh, these are the things that he will read in your body paragraph. 
All right. This one is another outline statement. Well, it's the same. The idea is totally the same as the one that I have just mentioned. But I just changed some words here. I just paraphrased biggest advantage to chief benefit. So when we say chief, it's the main, uh, the primary. Uh, advantage is changed to benefit, a positive aspect, a pro of a situation. And uh, the disadvantage, the word disadvantage is changed to drawback. Right, but they mean the two sentences mean the same thing. Another topic global warming is one of the biggest threats humans face in the 21st century, and sea levels are continuing to rise at alarming rates. What problems are associated with this, and what are some possible solutions? So, we're not uh, going to talk about the positive and the negative aspect anymore. We have two different questions this time, the problems and the solutions to global warming and increasing sea levels. The introduction is, climate change is among the principal dangers facing people this century and ocean levels are increasing dramatically. So you see that climate change is a paraphrase of global warming. Among the principal dangers, among the main, chief, primary dangers, that's a paraphrase of one of the biggest threats. Facing people this century is a paraphrase of human face in the 21st century. Yeah, we're still in the 21st century. So you can say this century. And uh, ocean levels, a paraphrase of sea levels. Plus increasing dramatically is a paraphrase of continuing to rise at alarming rates. And the outline statement is this essay will first suggest that the biggest problem caused by this phenomenon is the flooding of homes. So this is the answer to the first question, what problems are associated with this? And then submit building flood protection as the most viable solution. The answer to the second question. By the way, when we say viable, it means that uh, it's, it has the highest possibility of being successful. So yeah, viable solution, the most possible solution. All right, in this sentence, I just changed uh, some words. Well, I just changed biggest problem to main problem and the rest is the same. So yeah, you just, if you want to have other words, you can make use of main or chief or major. We uh, also have primary, right? So the, they can be used for this, in replacement to this word. All right, then we have another sentence here. This essay will first suggest that the chief cause. So here we're not talking about the problem, the effect of that situation, but we're looking at the reason, the cause of the situation or of the phenomenon, okay? So there are also uh, times when the question is about the causes and the solutions. So you have to understand what the examiner is looking for, what the examiner is asking, rather, in order for you to uh, make use of the correct vocabulary. Okay. Now let's have the last topic. As most people spend a major part of their adult life at work, Job satisfaction is an important element of individual well-being. Would factors contribute to job satisfaction? How realistic is the expectation of job satisfaction for all workers? 
another topic, two different questions. And this is what we call a two-part essay because obviously you are presented with two different questions that you have to answer each. You have to discuss both of them. No opinions needed here. So the sample introduction is, as the majority of adults, well, that's a paraphrase of most people, and we understand that people here refer to adults because in the next part of the sentence, you see their adult life. So these people are, yeah, adults spend most of their time at work, right? A paraphrase of a major part of their adult life at work. Being content with your career, a paraphrase of job satisfaction is a crucial part, a paraphrase of an important element of a person's health and happiness, a paraphrase of individual well-being all right and the outline statement is this essay will first discuss which elements lead to job satisfaction and it will then address the question of how likely it is that everyone can be happy with their job as you see we have not included the specific answers to the two questions. So all you have to do is answer the two questions generally. The examiner only needs to know what you're going to write in the body paragraph, and you have to write an outline statement so that the examiner will know that you truly understood the question. All right. Yeah, so that's it. Now let's have a review of what we just talked about. So in this video, we covered how to write an effective introduction. I've shown you some common problems and a good and bad example of an introduction. To write a good introduction, we must write a paraphrase of the question, a thesis statement, for questions that require an opinion, while an outline statement for questions that don't need an opinion. All right, so hopefully you've understood what it takes to write an effective introduction and hopefully you'll apply them in your next practices. In the next video, we're going to cover how to write good body paragraphs. So, see you in the next video. Bye.